69 minutes. Get it? And you think I'm gonna like this? Because of that dirty sex thing? Have you seen Robert Paul Champagne, the try it out guy? What if I like took a video of myself peeing on a bush or something and be like, this could be you? You think like that would work? It couldn't be easy. Okay, this smells awful. Join us for 69 minutes. Where you'll wonder. Well, I'll take care of it because I always take care of it. Why? That that just played, that is what the thing is gonna be? Yeah. And so I was like the David Goggins of pregnancy. <laughs> you, you don't get to have six kids and not be into one. No, no, well, okay, so it's he- It's a lifestyle, Drew. Ah, it is! Shut up! <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Hey now, welcome to After Dark, Dr. Drew After Dark, of course. Uh, the phone number 818-253-1693. The email is at drdrewafterdark at gmail.com. We appreciate all of it. And do look out for the uh, announcement when we are uh, letting you know that we are taking live calls. Uh, speaking of that, if you missed that, uh, I do live calls oftentimes on a streaming show, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 3 o'clock. You can find that at drdrew.tv. Today, my guest, Jen Fulweiler, nationally touring stand-up, uh, best-selling author, mom of six, which I, this is what I, uh, I'm one of Christina P's favorite people, and uh, first comedy tour with her personal credit card. <laughs> Tell me about that. That's crazy. Um, it's probably the most <laughs> insane thing I've ever done. I wasn't represented, no manager, no agent. But I was doing stand-up. I had some fans, and I thought I could do a tour. I have no attention to detail. So, but how does that how does it work? Do you pay for a theater for the night? Or yes. You, how did you know how to do that? Even okay, because I'd done a book tour. I, okay. I it, and and I had rented smaller places, but I found out theaters are half price on Monday nights. Oh. So I called. Literally, I would Google like, like a movie theater or a theater, no, theater like a theater, performance theater performance hall, like a proscenium. Theater. Theater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would call theater. I would literally Google. Rent Theater in Columbus, Ohio. Oh I called gosh. them. They thought I was a prank caller because people evidently don't do this. <laughs> and I'd say, what's your Monday night rate? You can rent out like a 500-seater for like $2,000. And, and so then I kept all the profit because I, I just paid Why a Why hasn't fee. this become a thing for comedians I, now? Well, Why, well, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. <laughs> it seems like you've, just, you've discovered something. As usual, the middleman has ta taken a cut, and you just got rid of the middleman. I got rid of the middleman, and well, now I have a middleman, and I like them a lot, actually. But so I, I guess I think people just don't know you can do it. Now, I will say it was a thousand times harder than I thought it would be. To give you just one example, we had to get event insurance I, because I don't have a promoter, I don't have agents. Uh, yeah. And so I had to actually sign something that said there will be no tractor pulls, no drag races, and no flame throwing at my events. You and could I probably thought, pretty much guarantee that, I would say. Well, it kind of gave much. me ideas. I was like, well, should I? I mean, it sounds like people are doing this and it's working really well if I have to initial these columns. Maybe, yes. maybe I should. Yes. Um, it, of 13 shows, uh, 11 sold out. The other two came really close to selling out. And it worked, but I mean, we would have been in bankruptcy. Like if I hadn't sold tickets, cause I, you know, I booked all these theaters and all the support. And the other funny thing is I ran out of money for staff. So I just had to rope my kids into coming. My kids were literally my tour manager. I mean, I, you can't like make it? this stuff up. They loved it. How it, old are they? Well, at the at the time, they were ages like fourteen oh. down to four, <laughs> and yeah. But no, Doctor Drew, it gave them so much mileage because when they went back to school after that summer, they were like, you know, their little friends would be like, "What did you do this summer? I rode the big slide at the water park." My kids were like, "I was in Toledo, and this guy put the thirty six C gels on the lights, and I was like, why do I even have a rider if you people aren't going to read it?'" You know, this is like my twelve year old tour manager. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that's it was hysterical. a lot of fun. Now, uh, The Naughty Corner, is it on Amazon Prime? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, it's on Amazon. Uh, it's also YouTube. free on YouTube. It's okay. just, yeah, you can watch it on YouTube. And too. you live here? Austin, Texas, Austin. yeah. And yeah. is that where you've always lived? Or? Yes, yes, I'm a native Austinite. Which, isn't it 
amazing how the center of gravity of comedy has moved down here. That was some great luck. <laughs> that was incredible. Yeah. And so I, I, I just, so I have a million questions. So did you always, this is the, the obvious question to ask, and I'll just ask it because I got to frame it somehow. Is this something you always wanted to do before you were a mom? Did you want to do comedy or were you a performer in some other capacity? It was I, I was a public speaker. Mainly I was a writer. All I ever wanted to do in my life was write. So I was, as a doctor and someone who knows about psychology, this might make a lot of sense to you that I was an only child. We moved a lot when mm. I was a kid. I had no friends. I was bullied all the time. And so writing Bullied was just, by women or men or both? Uh, both. I mean, just whoever was around. I mean, uh, it was it was really bad. And uh, what and do you I think that was uh, that I got a really bad perm and I'm very tall and and but I was always the new kid and I have no siblings. Yeah. Um. So there was no one to have my back. Mm. I was an easy target mm. and I just looked strange. And um. So having no friends coming home from bullying, I would just get out get out in front of our old computer and I would just right it, mm. that was my escape like a, like a journal oh, oh no uh, tortured novels a mm. lot of tortured novels things like that i i wrote multiple novels in high school wow. all of them very bad but it was you know it was a good outlet and i think when i had kids what did you go formally train as a writer was that i studied it a lot in college where'd you go to college at ut i graduated so you're right here yeah, yeah. were you here Towards the end of the high school and stuff too, or yes, just... yeah, I finished high school in this area and okay. then I went to University of Texas. Okay, and was that a good experience for you? It was. I'd started out at Texas A and M, which is very religious. Mm. I was a lifelong atheist, and I was like, I cannot be around these religious people. So I switched to Austin solely for that reason. And I was is like, that Oh, a thank college, God, atheist. City College Station. College Station. Adam and I went down there a hundred years ago. Yeah, and I've got a great story. Okay, so. Uh, there was they brought us in and it was a big stadium like one of the like i think it was your basketball stadium or yeah something. huge and uh and a lot we were late the flights were delayed and this and that and then the kids that had brought us came in the room with like some faculty and stuff and there was a lot of this is a religious place this is you got to be careful just don't don't <laughs> don't foist anything on them you know it's just kind of keep it keep it cool guys oh you know my gosh. and we're like yeah yeah we, we understand we'll, we'll we'll be good and uh and we get out there and we're like, hey, we'll take some questions and stuff. And um, this one guy that looked like he played center for the off for the for the Aggies uh, is across the this. He was sort of up up here in the stadium, and he grabs the mic and he goes, "I couldn't wait to talk to you guys. I I'm so oh, I'm so excited you guys were here. I went." And I went to a prostitute three nights ago. And when I got in there, I couldn't get erect. And he started crying, like sobbing. And we were like, everybody, everybody, Texas a to everybody. And, oh. and we were like, well, thank you for asking. Hang on a second. We had to comment about, we had to tell them what we had just been through. He was the first question. First question. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're yeah. like, oh, okay. Religious clay place. Okay, got it. Uh, prostitution every cool, I guess, where you guys are. <laughs> That is like, everything I would expect yeah. from a Dr. Drew and Adam at College Station story. Yeah. I mean, that is, yeah. That's, yeah. So that's College Station. Yeah. So I, I was just super atheist. I just had to leave. So I got to Austin, Texas and was like, oh, a bunch of godless people. This is incredible. Exactly what I'm looking for. So, yeah. So I did study writing. Writing was my escape. And I think like a lot of women who have kids, I almost shut down what I really wanted to do. Okay, yeah, you're jumping ahead of me now. Yes, oh, oh, I get I'm sorry. That no, 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 See, no. I used because, to be a radio host, so I, I'm i sorry. This is your show. Well, no, don't do. Don't worry about that. It's that It's that I'm, I know where the meat is is where the kids arrive. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> We're yeah. Gonna okay, get there. okay, okay. We're going to get there. I just want to make sure yes. I understand you before that part because yes. we have triplets too. I, mean, I know. Right. And so I, to have... You know, we went through our own stuff. So I, I when you say six, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we spaced them out. It wasn't I, I six at care. once. <laughs> I don't care. But okay, so you're in college, you're studying writing. Did you, and what did you want to do at that point? I wanted to work at a big ad agency. That was my thing. Write yeah. copy, right? Yeah, ad yeah, copy. copywriting for yeah. television. Ah, uh, magazines. Okay, and did yeah. did so you Mad Men stuff? Yeah, right? exactly. And but. did did 
talk radio happen to you around that time, or was that later after momhood? No, it, it, yeah, that was later. I was already a mom. I already L- had six kids later. when I started in talk radio. Yeah, didn't do don't do things small. <laughs> no, and, never. And was radio part of the comedy thing too? No, radio came as an extension of writing. I had I had a couple books out. I got published okay, because got of it. my love of writing. And um, what's funny is I turned down Sirius XM twice. Mm. I said like I I I'm just a writer. I do things on paper. And they're like, yeah, no, we're not going to take no for an answer. And I'm, I'm glad they had that Good. attitude. How would you like doing radio? I loved it. Yeah. It was great. It's it was really right? a lot of fun. It yeah. is interesting. And and so comedy, where does that come into this? Is this? So I had this epiphany where I realized I'd always loved doing humor writing. And I love a challenge, as you can probably tell. And I thought, you know what the hardest thing to do is in humor writing would be stand-up comedy because it has to be perfect. It has to be distilled it is it is the purest form of that art and i was like that sounds terrifying it sounds hard if i did it 99 percent chance i just embarrass myself and fail so i'm in this where, is where else have you been like that where you take i mean do you go you know climb kilimanjaro and stuff like that too or do you where you take something and go that's got to be hard i'm gonna do it if it's hard it, yeah, nothing physical. I mean, like when I saw a sci-fi movie about a guy who was just a brain in a jar, and I was jealous. So I mean, nothing physical. Okay, I okay. never push myself. Okay, so the, so yeah. all, it, what what else? Intellectual or, or, uh, or well, frankly, I, I would say having so many kids. I never wanted kids. I have no natural maternal instincts. None. I'm an only That's child. Impossible. Yeah, my husband is an only child. My dad was an only child. I'd only held like one other baby before my kid. I mean, I didn't aspire to be a mom ever. I never babysat. I, I'm not the one who like asked to hold your baby. And, uh, and so you got married me. at what age? Uh, 26. And how long had you guys been together at that point? Uh, two years, okay. three years. Okay. Yeah. And that's and the relationship is good. Everything's yeah. solid. Which is, we and we just been married 20 years as of a couple of weeks and, ago. And, yeah. and, the, and the, all the kids put a put a challenge. Oh on yeah. That. Oh yeah. 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 So you have a kid. Right, yeah. you have your first child. You're how old? Twenty eight or something? Or twenty seven. Twenty seven. Yeah. And what? I like this. I'm going to do this, or this is super hard. I better go all in on it. You know what it was? I I had some <laughs> I had some <laughs> bad influences. So I I'd been atheist all my life. We both converted to Catholicism, and the, explain that to me. <laughs> I know. So I don't know. I mean, I just read a bunch of books, and I was like, yeah, I think that makes sense. And I, it's probably my extreme personality. Like, let's not be spiritual but not religious you know let's be religious but not spiritual and just just like you choose the most rigid you know alternative it's, lifestyle it's, people religion. don't appreciate also catholicism though it, it is kind of in in many respects it's the most intellectual yeah it, it's yeah and did you read yeah, yeah. thomas aquinas or oh, something of course. okay oh, so I this love is your thomas okay, so this sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. makes some yeah. sense now so did you yeah. talk to christina about that no we actually didn't have a chance to you know she studied it. that in england Oh, I didn't know she that. She went to Cambridge. Help me, Oxford. Help. What was it? She gets pissed at me every time I do this. I Whatever, whichever, whichever one. Uh, uh, I think I, I keep think saying Cambridge. Oxford. I think it was actually Cambridge. Oh, She's, that would have been a hot episode. I think she, YMH <laughs> listeners would love hearing about she, Aquinas. <laughs> she read all nine <laughs> volumes of Sir Thomas Aquinas. Yeah, St. Thomas Aquinas. Okay, now I'm more obsessed with her than I was. Yeah. That's incredible. Reasonable, yeah. Wow. Yeah, crazy. So, you know, and the Catholics, like, they, you know, they don't do contraception. I was like, well, I'll never do that. And then I, I was like, well, that's actually kind of a good idea. So wow, we just, yeah, I mean, we're like, so... <laughs> when you don't use contraception, you have, you have babies. Yeah, well, yeah, well, no, okay, no, no. Within Catholicism, there are all these different, very <laughs> scientific, like very accurate methods, like the Creighton method and all this, and and they have. I mean, they're as accurate as the pill, like you know, ninety five percent. So we use. It's actually a brand new method. It's called the Fulweiler guesstimation method. Mm. It has about a twenty percent effectiveness rate and eighty percent failure. And yeah, 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 I wouldn't say failure. I, it was, it was great. I love having a big family. We had uh, so I had six babies in eight years, just one after another. Um, it becomes a lifestyle at some point, you know. Yes, <laughs> That's favorite word, Drew. Yeah, I know. I've, I've been taking issue with the word lifestyle lately. Oh, because, yeah. Because oh, yeah, it, that's right. Because it glosses over so right. much. Right, doesn't it? I, the first time I heard it was in the Mob Wives. I'm like, uh, honey, that wasn't a lifestyle. That was yeah. that was just a criminal father. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, what, what are we glossing over here? And, yeah. now, and now all the uh, swingers are talking about their lifestyle and exactly. this lifestyle. Right, right. Fuck you guys. That's just that's just glossing over a, a more complicated story. Totally what I'm doing here. Which is true with parenting. Yeah. I, I'm here yeah, to tell yeah. you. 
So yeah, we had this experience where it was dropped into our life all at once. And so I really felt when we decided to go forward with three, they were trying to get us to reduce to two. I yeah, they and, do that. Yeah. And we talk about not not Catholic, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. And we did not feel we could do that. We just yeah. couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. And I really felt like a poker player who had all his chips in front of him and just went, Okay, we're going all in. That's it. Wow. We're all in on the parenting thing. Did you ever have that experience where you're just like, oh, this is what I do now. This is what I am. This is yes, it. yes. Yeah. And it's and what, it's, what number child? <laughs> right. Oh, for me, it was one. Right away. Like number yeah. one. Yeah. Well, isn't it almost like a like a trenches mentality? It's oh, you like, get survival full it, on. Exactly. Well, my, yeah. my hair was you know Annie's color when I when I was they were born. They turned white in a year. No, what's funny? Same with me. I dye my hair. It, my hair is like your color, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it started. Oh, that would like look right, cool, right, actually. Right. I think that would look good. Well, I might go natural at some yeah. point, but no. I mean, my my hair started turning gray like very quickly yeah. after all this. But I do. Th- I mean, I think there is kind of an analogy to literally being in a warfare trench situation because it's like. There are no breaks. There's no getting out of this. You're in it. So it, it, yeah, you just, what are we you, just do? you just keep going. Yeah. And and but and for women, they have the added thing of what it does to your body. Oh yeah. It just it's it's intense. It's, very it's for intense. real. It's very and, intense. But but in terms of not having a maternal, I'm not sure we're gonna take any calls or anything today. I've got a billion <laughs> questions for you today. In in terms of not having a maternal instinct, it, you still you know, one of the things, it's that drive to have a kid that lets you sacrifice your body, right? Or was it the religious thing now that was keeping you going and willing to do that? Once, see, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have the maternal instincts because I wasn't part, uh, I was kind of, you know, culture in the 80s and the 90s, let's face it, it was a little bit loveless. It was very individualistic. Mm. And I just didn't have exposure to, you probably know people who have big families and they have all the cousins in and out and their aunties over here that I didn't have any of that. And so I think I didn't have maternal instincts because I never had an opportunity to just see if this was for me or not. And I mean, I, I often say that I was so dissociated from that part of the human experience that in the back of my mind, I kind of thought that new human beings came from a cloning room at the back of Starbucks. Like they just came in wearing wire rim glasses, like 20 years old. I mean, I, yeah, it's, I forgot what I learned in health class about like how babies come into the world. So I think maybe, maybe I could have had some instincts if I'd ever been exposed to it. But then, you, I mean, you probably know how it is. Even if you're shocked by the idea of pregnancy, once you actually kind of get into it and think about what's going on. I mean, you you develop your own way of loving this kid and, and being all in, even if it doesn't look like a Martha Stewart situation. But you know? I'm wondering the the willing to sacrifice so many times. The, the, to me, when I see women do that, it's it, it, to me it looks like a little amnesia, like you don't remember <laughs> what it's really like, it meets this drive to reproduce, to have a baby. And you didn't have that. So what was, was there something about the Catholic Catholic faith or was I, your I, husband pushing at that point? Would he want more? No, he, we were both of the same mind. Like, oh, this is great. Kids are great. We should wait a, a while before we have the next one. And then we're like, oh, we're not waiting a while. Okay. Is that just a failure of the, of the system? The, the, no, I, I think, I think what I'm it was the, is, the, well, it's like. Okay, you know the what? The Fullweiler system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Fullweiler guesstimation. Yeah. I should teach like a master class. Uh, it's, it's, you know, for those that want to end up where you are, it'd, yeah. be, it'd be a great way to get there. It'd be very short. It'd be like 20 seconds long. Uh, here's how we do family planning. Uh, you know, you make a gin and tonic and, you know, see where the evening leads you. Uh, so, you know what? It, it's interesting that we live in this culture where, like, we've got David Goggins, who I'm the biggest fan of. And, and he'll be like, you know, you got to run 12 miles so that you can get fit or whatever. And when it comes to the fitness realm, when it comes to the diet realm, we intuitively understand that it's not sacrifice in the sense of something bad. There's this incredible payoff. And so I was like the David Goggins of pregnancy, that it's I didn't see it as this woe is me martyr sacrifice. Mm-hmm. It was like. I'm getting a whole squad here. You know, I'm really socially awkward. This is this is a chance to have six friends and my only chance to have six okay, friends. Okay. So so I I didn't see it as as like a woe is me. Was sacrifice. six the number? 
No, no. I had a, I'm sorry to make this a very complicated interview, but I had a very serious blood clotting disorder. I had to give myself shots in the stomach every day throughout all my pregnancies. Really went off the rails. Is it TTP or something? No, uh, it's called factor two. It's very unusual. I inherited it from both parents. Oh, so, so I don't know if they met at a family reunion or what, but um, I had homo, homozygous for that. That's crazy. It, yeah, so I was on blood thinners. Doesn't... Doesn't factor two, you had factor two deficiency, right? Yeah, I think so. And so doesn't that cause both clotting and bleeding? I Well, for me, it was just clotting. Just clotting, okay. Yeah, because in, so in pregnancy number six, I ended up with bilateral pulmonary embolisms. So the, the clots in my lungs, were some of them were so big, the guy who did the CT scan said a layman could point out these clots on your skin. Yeah, of He's course. like, they're huge. So and you're taking heparin all through your your. Yeah, pregnancy. yeah, Lovenox, $900 Lovenox, yeah. a month, yep, Beautiful. after insurance, wonderful. Yeah. So do you have any pulmonary disability from all that? Because that can really... Yeah, yeah. I, I do have lung damage. I can't breathe as well um, because of that. And uh, so that so after number six, uh, we were like, okay, well, maybe we need to do something other than the full wire. We still did the natural. We I was going to say putting yeah. you on birth control pill may have its own risk. Exactly. So, so right. Do you and, have to take Coumadin all the time or anything, or do you do anything else? I should. I really should. Or Eliquis or one of those? I, yeah, I should, Dr. Drew. I definitely should. <laughs> but they said it was... <laughs> way you're looking at me <laughs> we, we, because it's you used i could the way people use lifestyle right, <laughs> like there was, yeah, exactly. was glossing over yeah. a lot i'm trying to seem less crazy than i am this is my first show on your podcast i'm trying to seem it's, like it's a normal good. human you, being you're normal <laughs> you are bright as hell you're fascinating <laughs> but you should be taking some eloquence or some I, okay least. you know what i'll start that tomorrow I will. Yeah. or or at least a low dose or something they, i mean they they believe that there are no issues as long as i'm not pregnant so I was strictly warned not to have any more kids after. Do they ever worry about prolonged plane? I mean, you, you tour. I mean, yeah. prolonged plane flights and stuff like that. They, do they worry? They seem to really believe. My my hematologist seemed to really believe that as long as I'm not pregnant, it really shouldn't be an issue. He did recommend Eliquis, but he was like, hey, honestly, it'll probably be fine even if you don't. I, I get that. Yeah. You could take a low dose of Eliquis too. I mean, you don't well, take that's a full true. dose. Yeah, okay. I should I do that. Think about it. Two that would be funny if I end up actually getting on that drug because <laughs> I went on your show. I was like, well, Dr. Drew told me. Well, it just, it, I'm breaking through your denial a little bit here. Okay, so. that's good. This is an intervention. I it, like it. It's not an intervention. It's just a little friendly, like, hmm. <laughs> the, the ther it's called therapeutic wonderment. I wonder if you ought to do that. <laughs> like, I, that's I a good term. <laughs> it, it is a very effective term. I taught it to these guys for years. <laughs> this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. And, you know, it's the holiday season and people get stressed and of course, you exchange gifts and you have vacation experiences, but you focus on yourself and your well-being. It's a good time to do so, and with better help, there's never been a better time. No more can you complain about stigma or excuses. It's available. It's easy to access, and as I said, the holidays are a great time to take care of yourself. Give yourself a gift. So whether it's starting therapy, going easier on yourself during the tough moments, or treating yourself to a day of complete rest, remember to treat yourself properly during this season. Of course, I've been sending patients, family, friends to better help, and I've been very pleased, and I've been a patient, I've been treating patients. It's I don't understand why we don't do a better job of taking care of ourselves. It's it's odd to me, but you no longer have any excuses, so let's do it. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It is entirely online. It is designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. Switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. In this season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash after dark today, one word, to get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp.com slash after dark. Betterhelp, H E L P.com slash after dark. Well, what is HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store. Count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. And with the holiday season upon us, say hello to less stress with the help of HelloFresh. Skip the grocery store, save time, save spending all that money with tasty recipes delivered to your door. 
Tis the season for giving and gathering, and with HelloFresh, it can also be the season of saving. Actually, save money this month with fresh recipes delivered cheaper than takeout, and with pre-portioned ingredients, you will never waste money on excess food. That is what I have noticed. Uh, my son has done some of the cooking, as has Susan. They're having fun with it, and it's just exactly what we need. You get everything you need to whip up a fresh, tasty meal, and again, as I've said, it is delivered right to your door. Make hosting this holiday season a joy rather than a hassle with the help of HelloFresh Market. Crowd-pleasing charcuterie boards to photo-worthy desserts. It's, it's HelloFresh Market. Again, we love HelloFresh at our house. When the box shows up, we are ready for it. And we look at all the recipes and the pictures. It is, it's been great. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Dr. Drew Free, D-R-D-R-E-W-F-R-E-E, -E -E, and use code Dr. Drew Free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash Dr. Drew Free with code Dr. Drew Free. HelloFresh, it's America's number one meal kit. Uh, okay, so now we're at the six kids point in our conversation, <laughs> which is where it's all happening. Now you go out on the road to be a comedian. At, at, how old is the oldest kid at that point? When I booked my own tour, the oldest was 14, 13, said, 14, yeah. yeah. And, and so, and that was, you, but you already had a following, right, online. From uh, from SiriusXM, yeah. From Sirius. That yeah. Was, so, so, but when did you start doing the uh, the videos and things? That was that media. that was during COVID because you know I I couldn't tour I, I so I quit okay. SiriusXM to go all in on comedy in March of 2020. Okay, and I was left in a situation where I had no income, no job. It was pretty catastrophic. But your husband's okay. He's working. He's not really into working. That's not yeah. He and what's okay? You, you don't get to have six kids and not be into working. <laughs> no, no, well, okay. So it's he a lifestyle, Drew. It ah, is. Shut <laughs> up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it okay. is a lifestyle. He, my husband, grew up poor. Okay. He ended up going to Yale and graduating in three years with honors, Columbia Law School, Stanford Business School. What um, the fuck? It's, yes. Exactly. He knows and how to work, clearly. He just feels like he's done enough work at this point. My Yale man husband, like when I married a Yale man, I was like, if I can just get a ring on it, the minute that engagement ring slips onto my finger, all of my financial problems just disappear. And But he's discovered work-life balance. And he's like, well, you know, I've done a lot. <laughs> did, did he have a workaholic phase? He did, very much so. And did that help you guys be okay now? I just worry yeah, about yeah. the six kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, okay, he's backing down a little bit. Yes, away. yes. Okay. And so, so he's and, not, okay. Well, and right, let, me I mean, be, like, let, let me be clear. My husband is a wonderful man. If we got in a dire financial situation, of course he, he would go I back I kind of don't blame him. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like he's done, a, you're right, he's done a lot. Okay, think about this. From an evolutionary psychology perspective, uh. men, he like back in, you know, for the first million years of human history, when you hit like 40, 45. You were dead. When, well, you, you were, were dead. Gone. Or if you weren't dead, you had sons who could take over 100%. the farm or the hunting or you whatever. You had grandkids. Yes, I'm telling you yeah. that I think men hit their mid 40s and they're like, I'm out. Like their genes are like, I have done enough work. This I'm 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 sick of it. <laughs> so it, it there is a weird thing that does it's I, I'm struggling with it right now myself. And it's not that I don't want to work, it's that I don't work the same way. Okay, in what sense? I used to get up at five in the morning and see fifty patients a day and, and come home at ten o'clock at wow. night. Wow. And well and media. Like media we sort of shoved it in in the corners here and there. I do it like Friday afternoon to Saturday afternoon, wow. that kind of stuff. And it, it, I, but I was a severe workaholic. Yeah. And now I can't imagine doing that, but I have immense guilt about it. It's very weird. Guilt in the sense, I mean, I assume your family is financially okay. We're fine. But, yeah. It, it's, so it, no, guilt, it's guilt, in, guilt in the sense that I'm, I'm meant to do that. I should be doing that. I'm not, I'm not up to my, my worth as a, you know, I was, it, what I, when I was deeply into it, I just thought it was, what I was doing was so important. Was so important, yeah. so important, so important. And, and, and I was, had great, you know what it is? I, I'm, this is so funny. This has become like my therapeutic environment in here. I talk to these guys about things. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that lifestyle thing does bother me. <laughs> so, but, it, but is that I had disdain for people that didn't go all the way in, um, in the practice of medicine, do it all the way. And yeah. now that's me. And oh. it's like, oh, so, I, but I'm doing lots of other things and it's creative and it's interesting and I'm still helping people and I still am grateful and I still value it, but I have this weird 
guilt. So your guilt is not about your relationship to your family. Like, are, no. are you being a provider? Your guilt no, is about, better. are that's you honoring better. the profession that you am, have chosen? Am I doing, well, I'm not even sure it's that. It's, I had disdain for guys like me. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so I am that guy now. It's like, mm, <sighs> it's hard. But I'm wondering what his version of this is. I, yeah. I think his version of it is, I think he got very disillusioned about the value that his corporate job was adding was he doing law? to the world. Yeah, he was he was doing law and so he used Got to work I... at the big form, the big firms in New York like in the World Trade Center was all he that. Like an investment banker? Or and something? no, he he did like mergers and acquisitions oh, this, law. This man the, could make a lot of money. I mean, my husband's yeah, earning I mean, potential that, is is very high. It happened to a yeah. friend of mine too, a guy named Paul Mercurio, he got the comedy bug in the middle of that and had to leave it and do comedy full time. And was he married? Yes. Which and everything's fine. He's, he's now the well, lead producer at Colbert and things. And he does, oh, okay, okay. He, so it works out. Yeah, Good. And he's a yeah. great comedian. He yeah. loves it and everything. And he couldn't have done. He couldn't have done it. You know, he like, yeah. couldn't. You yeah. Know, a certain point. Even yeah. though, it's it's so weird to me when people are brilliant and really good at that stuff and they just can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But comedy finds you, right? Oh, oh, absolutely. That's what I'm learning from talking to lots of com comedians. And and you haven't really told me that story though. You talk. It found you as a challenge. It did. When did the funny part grab you? Because people that are funny need to be funny, in my experience. Is that not you? It's hundred percent me. Yeah. I had done humor writing. I mean, I I started a website in two thousand two where I did humor writing, and it would go viral, like shutting down my server. Viral. Remember back when it was like just yeah. websites. There were no blogs. There was no social media. So all that stuff went viral. And, and I loved it, but I just thought, I, I didn't see an extension of that, as I mentioned, when I became a mother. It just, I think sometimes women who have kids, we shut down our dreams. We don't let ourselves acknowledge what maybe we really want to do because we feel like that would be impossible. And Sometimes it is. Well, that's true. <laughs> you know what I mean? With, reality. with kids, I mean, for instance, like, like, could you leave and do your tours right. if your husband didn't have work-life balance right true. now? True. You know, well, he was, he was working more at that time, but yeah, I, I see what you're saying. So what happened- ha it, Having somebody tending to the kids yeah, is yeah, yeah. really important. It, yes. lets, it lets another person do what they want to do, whatever that is. Right. And I, I'm very much into- the idea that e each of you gets your chance to do it. I mean, I think that's really important. Absolutely. And um, so, yeah, certainly it's this has all been very much a partnership between the two of us. And and so, yeah, when, when we had young kids, I was just fully supporting his work. He, and he didn't go back into corporate Did you law. resent it at all? No, not at all. Yeah, no, see, no, no, it's, no. It's, it yeah. works when you really have a functioning relationship yeah. and you're committed to your family right. and stuff. Right. You you figure it out together. Right. What and you're I was do. and I was genuinely happy when yeah. you have a good marriage. His success is my success, yep. and vice yep. versa. And I just I would be so and genuinely now it's vice happy. Versa, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is absolutely. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And so, um, yeah, so he he did he was still working a bit when when I first started the tour, but um, so. The comedy hit me because when I was on Sirius XM, people would say, oh, I love it that you do stand-up bits on your show because I had a solo show. I had a lot of time to fill, two hours a day. And they said, you're doing stand-up. And I realized, well, I'm not exactly doing stand-up, but maybe I should try it. <laughs> was it all written out before or no. was it spontaneous? No, I, I don't want to say I totally phoned in that show every single day, but... <laughs> well, but you'd said that your humor was all written to begin with, and I wondered if that was the way you got into comedy or was it just in you? It, it I think you, it was really. just in me. It was me talking trash on the radio and... <laughs> And thinking, well, I should fun. distill this into. Yeah, you I and Christina, do this perfect this talking <laughs> shit. This is, oh yeah, this is, exactly. <laughs> yeah, this is perfection. Totally. As far as you guys don't hang out together. We, hey, I'm ready. Like you know, I'm I, right now. I'm just driving slowly by her house in the middle of the night. <laughs> but if she ever wants to invite me in, I'm I'm ready for that. <laughs> All right, so we got a lot of stuff we can do here. Oh, they're they're in fact alerting me. Let's get to it, guys. Enough <laughs> talking. Uh, you guys, tell me what do you want first. Since you're you're pushing me along, there there are a few good li live calls here ready to go. Should I get to them? All right. Yeah, let's do and it. He says yes. Okay. Uh, here we go. This is uh, Joanna. I am. Hi, Joanna. Hi. Here we go. Joanna. Hello. Hi there. Hello. Hi, Joanna. You're on with Jen Fulweiler. How are you? I'm good. Uh, how are you? I'm running outside real quick because um, I'm at work. So hold on. <laughs> That's incredible. She's got an embarrassing question. Okay. Yeah, here we go. 
What kind of work do you do? Yeah, no, I need to talk to Dr. Drew. What kind of work do you do, Joanna? I work, I work in uh, financing at a furniture store. Oh, so there's a whole bunch of you in there, and you got to get away from that group. Yeah, yeah, I can't. Um, it's kind of a personal question, so I didn't want to. I hear I'm you. relatively new, so I didn't want to. Got it. Give too much. Okay, what's going on? Okay. So, my question was, oh, well, there's people out here, too. My question was, um, so, if I am by myself, mm -hmm. I can manually, I can manually take care of myself, right? You can climax, right. But, or with, yes, with yep. other people, I cannot. So I don't know if it's like a stage fright thing yeah. or just a physical thing. You yeah. Know? Are you heterosexual? I am. Okay. And you have one partner or you just, are you, I mean, are you involved with somebody or is it sort of into, just? I have know? none right now. It's non-existent right now. But, but have you been quite me, a while, doctor. Okay. Let me ask it this way. When, when you were in a relationship, was it a satisfying long-term relationship? Or did you have good communication with that person? Did you feel comfortable? Was it, have you had that yeah, kind of thing? Yeah, we did. I dated him for four years. Okay. Yes, okay. We, we dated for four years. And uh, yeah. Okay, so hold on. This, this is very yeah. common. So I don't want you to feel weird about this. It is very common, actually. And how old are you? Okay. How old are you? I'm 26. Oh, yeah, for sure. 26? Very common. So, uh, Joanna, let give a little crack at it first if you wish. Wait, oh, me? Yeah. Oh, so, oh okay. Joanna. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm looking at yeah, Jen yeah, saying I was Joanna. Like, okay. <laughs> like, yeah, you're looking Jen. at me like, what? <laughs> um, well, jo uh, Joanna, do you feel like, like, let's say when you just see yourself in the mirror when you get out of the shower, I mean, what is your initial gut reaction? How do you feel about yourself and, and the way you look? Oh, I, I love myself. I oh, love good. the way I look. Okay. I love I love everything about it. Yeah. Good. And I, um, and I, I will say this though. Oh, go ahead. Go finish your thought. Yeah. Go go ahead, Joanna. Oh, I was I was gonna say this that when I'm by myself, you know, it's not a subtle thing. It's very much powerful. Yeah. And I ha it's almost like I gotta force it out. You know, I, yeah, I gotta yeah. push it out. Yeah. 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 Are you on birth control pills? I am not. Good. Any medication otherwise? No, sir. Okay, good. You'd be amazed how often medication gets in the middle of this. People don't even think about it, and, the, and, and that's the issue. Okay, uh, you want to crack out? I know what to right. tell her. I, I got some ideas. I have some ideas, but I, I was going I was going to assume that maybe it was a self-consciousness thing, but it sounds like it's not that. So you well, take it, Dr. It's Drew. so interesting to me. It's interesting to me as a male. I wouldn't even have thought of that. It, Real, yeah, oh, to me, so, it's like, what else could yeah, it be? Right. I'm, I'm drawing and, a blank and, now. And so, yeah. and so as a man, it, it, what this is is more right. of a mechanical issue. And so I'm going right there. Oh, e that's even so though, funny. Even though you're absolutely correct that all that is important. And we, we established that she had comfort and she was in a stable relationship and she felt communicative and intimate all those things are very important as a male you never think about because <laughs> because so here's funny. the thing about men we here's we we like how you look because we're there we yeah. tell, we're, we're, we're telling you with our penis we like how you look we're, that's why we're there uh, so so you why you would be concerned about it is odd to us which is kind of interesting male female thing just at the outset okay. but here's the thing joanna you, you many 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 young women um sort of uh, are never, nobody ever sits down and say, hey, this is how most women work. And the reality is that the majority of women need some kind of direct stimulation like you do to yourself in order to have an orgasm. It's just not going to happen otherwise. Right. You're not going to have it with intercourse. Now, about 5% of women have stolen it from everybody else. They could have multiple orgasms. They only have orgasms with intercourse. They don't like oral sex or direct stimulation oftentimes. Right. And then there's people that are in between that are sort of usually need some kind of direct something, but sometimes we'll have an orgasm with intercourse, sometimes not. Um, and there's all sort of all these variations on the theme. Uh, and it gets very confusing for women because they, they feel that they're different or broken or something. And then the women, I've heard this a million times where these women who have lots of orgasms, orgasms look, at the, look at their peers and just go, well, you haven't, just, you haven't figured it out yet. It's like, no, it's a different biology. It's construction, a different thing. And you're with the majority, Joanna. Right. You're actually, most women are like you. Now, there are sort of two 
common solutions to the problem. Do you know what I'm going to talk about? Vibrators? Vibrator is one of the okay. solutions. So it's doing something with your partner, manual stimulation, vibrator, something in addition to his penis or, or whatever. Um, but the other thing is sure. or, oral sex. Uh, most women, some sort of some sort of direct stimulation that your partner can provide for you. Um, if you talk to them about it, men are more than happy to oblige. They are, they are, they. Like I said, we're all about can do. We want to get the results. <laughs> you tell us what you need. We're here to He's deliver. Action oriented. We're deliver. We'll deliver. I love men. I'll they get the job done. So, <laughs> yep. But you should not. You should. You should not be uncomfortable about this at all. The one thing I will I will warn you a little bit about is that some men get a little weird about sex toys. They feel, that I, I think it's kind of a, almost like, a, <laughs> Jen's looking at me like, oh, what? <laughs> I'm offended <laughs> I, I just, I'm learning. I'm taking notes. This is very instructive. They, they get a little offended as though it's competition or something. Like, they should be able to do it themselves. You know, they, again, okay. if they want to get it done, and you're bringing in hardware, it's like, <laughs> well, now the hardware is doing it. I want it to do it. But but believe me, most guys are fine with it. So <laughs> so it, it's really about just you knowing what you want and need and communicating that to your partner and not feeling the least bit uncomfortable about it, okay? Right. But you can I can I ask you one more thing, Doctor? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. So what what I will say is that when I'm with a partner, it's 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 waterworks down there, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when I'm by myself, mm -hmm. there's nothing there's nothing going on, but I can get there. Does that uh, make sense? It, it does, and uh, there probably is more going on than you know. Maybe that's too intense. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, okay. it, it's probably more going on than you know. Uh, but let's be fair. Once there's stimulation of that region, there can be more lubrication. There just can be. Some some women are, are set up that way. It's all good. You're completely normal. Don't worry about yourself. That's what I want you not to not to worry about yourself at all. Do we have any voice uh, voicemails? Yep. Okay. One second. It would have been great if she did that call in front of clients who were working on their financing. I know, it'd be good. <laughs> or if they could hear my answer, it'd be even yeah. worse. <laughs> Put it on speakerphone. Let's just make this a group conversation. <sighs> oh, my goodness. Hi, Dr. Drew. So I have a very interesting question that I never hear women talk about, oh. but I'm sure we all experience. Okay. So in between the labia majora and the labia minora, mm -hmm. there's, like, this skin that isn't, like, outer skin. It's like an inner type skin yes and it produces like i don't know like juice not juice Sometimes. but like an interesting area throughout the day and interesting area i feel like no women talk about this and i want to know like does it really like secrete like other things like an armpit would or like what's going on there like okay. what type of skin is it okay how does that work and why does no one talk about it Thank okay. you, All and right. see you later, Dr. Drew. Cheers. Thank you, my dear. Any uh, insights? I think women don't talk about it because a lot of us are repressed and completely ignore our bodies. I was <laughs> I, I, Still I'm in like, 2024. I know, yeah. I know, but that's that really suits me to just kind of ignore, pretend like, you know, like, so I, I didn't know any of the words she just said. <laughs> Is, is do, that, we have, do we have the same anatomy? Is that your Catholicism kicking in? Is no, that... no. I was always uptight about that. That's that's one of the things that was a great fit for Catholicism about <laughs> me. Just super. Let's be repressed and talk about will you nothing. Use, will you use repression as that? You, it sort of suggests somebody did it to you, uh, and and it feels like you kind of did it to yourself maybe just sort of how you were well i think it's being very cerebral i mean mm. again like the brain and the jar thing i just anything that involves the physical body i've never had a lot of interest <laughs> in. were you sexually active before your marriage uh can i skip that question oh, oh. my my husband is very like i don't know can i can I skip that one? He, do you tell me more about him, though? He's very what? Well, he, okay, he is so private that I think he wanted ah, me fine. to go on this show and say that we reproduce asexually, uh, like okay. amoeba, so you he's know. he's very, uh, yeah. Was he Catholic to begin with? No, okay. no, no, neither one of us were. Okay. Yeah. What, what was his, was he atheist also, or? He was non-practicing Southern Baptist. How did you guys meet? At work. We, we worked at a high-tech company. Oh, interesting. Yeah. What were you doing there? Were you doing copy for them? Well, no, I was a programmer. I it gets yeah. I I got into programming. 
<laughs> Were there other careers along the way here? <laughs> no, that's it. We've covered them all now at this point. But yeah, I'm, I have a math mind. You're starting so, to remind right? me of, and I'm blanking on her name. She uh, was a violinist, a virtuoso violinist. She's on the internet. Uh, oh my One of the Dixie chicks? <laughs> no, it, she, she's really known for internet, for, for influencer stuff kind of thing. Uh, she's super brilliant. It's had like nine careers and stuff too. And oh, that, okay, yeah. That's yeah. although I'll say I'm yeah. sticking with stand up. That's this is the. I, only I understand. One. I, I yeah. get it. Uh, does that come up in any in any searches? Uh, no, no child 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 prodigy violin uh, influencer child prodigy. I know who, oh, oh, she did, um, she did like a cover of a Christmas song that went really viral last year. Okay. I, I know could, who you're talking like about. That sounds like her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She's like me, but with talent. It, that sounds incredible. Yeah, but uh, in her own area, was she, cause she's not known as a violinist anymore. She abandoned all of that. Oh, really? Google is, yeah. Is she in stand up now too? She's in sort of, um, influencer stuff right i, I don't oh. know characterize oh no <laughs> no what is she posting like bikini is, pics now no no not like that she, she they're but, but like you all these intellectual pursuits and things <laughs> yeah and yeah so, and so it's all these are all violinists she, she does she's not known as a violinist anymore it's the problem she's probably on only fans it, now no 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 if she were smart i mean that is a compliment make some money uh, she oh well it's it's i, I actually you know uh I interviewed her on the Dr. Drew podcast it, about five years ago. It might be interesting if it came up that way, but anyway. <laughs> Programming. And it was just because you thought it was a hard thing and I better learn how to do it? Oh, that was because it relaxes my crazy brain to have everything be perfectly efficient. In okay. programming, everything has to Got work. It. And Got what's it. interesting Perfect. is that there's actually a great overlap between comedy. I have my whole comedy set in a spreadsheet that's conditionally formatted with the level of laugh that I get for each punch and then the time between laughs and the conditional formatting shows the, um, it does a color for how long that space is so that I can visually Holy shit. see my, I can show it to you right Has now. Has anybody I ever mean. done that? Not we that I know It feels like you ought to write a treatment because people yeah. are always trying to figure out what makes mirth. Yeah. You know, what's the source of it is. Yeah. And you've drilled it down to a timing. Yeah. I and, mean, and most of that timing when in the comedic world is sort of automatic for these guys or they sort of condition to it. Yeah. Do you also, are you able to respond to an audience so you kind of can develop it away from the formatting? Y yeah, and, and that was probably my hardest thing in comedy between the spreadsheet and then the fact that I started in theaters, which is very unusual. Yeah, yeah. I did have to learn to loosen up. So my agent, once I signed with agents, I, they sent me out on club tours because they were like, your comedy is good, but it is it's a little bit performative, and so you need to you need to spend some time in clubs just talking so it, to so people. So it's because because an audience member, you sort of feel like it's spontaneous what's coming at you. Yeah, you kind of want that illusion. Yeah. So to her vaginal skin, okay. Oh yeah, uh, yes, right. So yeah, yeah. That is uh, very much similar to the lining of the mouth or the lining of the inside of the vagina. It's sort of a transitional area. Uh, it's not quite the same, but it's it's similar, and it's obviously not skin, which is again you transition from skin, which is more the labia majora, and there are a bunch of glands around that area: the Skene's glands, Barthlin's glands, and some really? people, yeah, but most of them go sort of more inside. But some people they can get a little bit more towards the outside, and so there is a certain amount of stuff there. Huh. And she clearly, I think she's noticing some lubrication or something, and that that is not that common that people would notice it, and that's sort of why it's coming to mind for her. But um, yeah, it's yeah, nothing unusual, and uh, nothing people don't talk about it because it's usually kind of a nothing. It's, it's sort yeah. of, I mean, gynecologists think about it and worry about it, and you can get you get cysts in that area and stuff that we have to deal with. But yeah, that's all. So. All right, uh, let's see. Medical videos. You want to try and solve some yeah. problems? Yeah. All right. That sounds it. incredible. <laughs> incredible. <laughs> and then we'll look at some of Christina's TikTok, see what's, in, what her, what's inside her head. I need a doctor oh, wow. to stitch this ASAP. Look at the marks on my upper back. It's spreading and it's getting darker. This is my back a month and a half ago. This shit is literally mutating. What the fuck is this? You better show it to me again. I couldn't see anything. I may be too far away from this, and he... What is that? He's talking about that area, that yeah. dark. Uh, I'm going to guess. So some people, when they get irritations, they pigment, okay? And he's got okay. somewhat somewhat dark skin, and so he may... Go, some people depigment also when they have dark skin, but some most, I would say, pigment. 
and uh, he's having some sort of an allergic, you know, eczema, rash, something there, and he needs to, you know, get some start with some cortisone cream. But I doubt that's going to work. That's pretty thick skin up there, and he'll probably have to see a dermatologist that can figure. I out think exactly. I might know what it is. Yeah. What do you say? What do you call it? Uh, tinea versicolor. No, that's that's not tinea versicolor. No. Uh, I don't think uh, tinea versicolor is typically depigmenting. Right. Yeah. It blocks the sun from getting through, and that looks like a pigmented patch. Uh, tinea versicolor is also called Malassezia furfur. Crazy name, uh, and it's very common. Your, your kids ever get those white blotches on their face and they show up in the summertime? Re- no, never saw that. No. It's very, very common. So. I get those. Yeah, I used to have one as a kid too. All right, another uh, medical video. Looks like a normal leg, right? Watch this. Well, that's just edema. That's not a normal leg. He's got uh, pitting edema, that is called. Yeah. When you had your uh, deep venous thrombosis, did you have pitting edema like that? It was it was similar to that. Yeah. And very painful. It doesn't seem like it's painful for him. He, he might, because, you know, he's doing the pitting. So um, it's when somebody else does it, people complain about the pain more than not. And so, yeah, that can be anything from heart failure to a blood clot to kidney failure to liver failure to a million other things. But that does not normally happen. That seems like a relative of the young man, and that is not normal for a young man. And the fact that he is just showing us one leg and not two, if he had the kidney failure and whatnot, oftentimes people have asymmetric edema, and they notice it in one leg, and they've actually got it in both. So, hmm. again, he needs to see a doctor right away, right away. It's not nasty. It's very common. It's just kind of unusual in a younger person. And God, it could be any, it could be a million things. And then what's causing the kidney failure or the liver failure it could be a billion other things. So, and medication sometimes even does that. All right, what else you got? Okay. Um, can a TikTok optometrist tell me what the frick is wrong with my eyes? Because this morning, Uh-oh. oh my God, it's so funny. This morning, I woke up and yes, I'm sleep deprived. I've worked about 40 hours in the last two days so yes i am sleep deprived and Uh yes i am working a day shift that i slept through the first hour of but i'm here now can someone tell me why my eyes like every time i use one eye it's like if i'm 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 using this eye to focus on like my phone right now yeah i lose control of this eye yeah it's called a discontinuity there's like nothing i've been sitting here for like 30 minutes trying to get them to be straight it is so funny I'm like at work, like talking to them like a fucking pirate. Like, I need a fucking eye patch. Why? Why are my eyes doing that? So. Poor thing. Yes. She's working too hard. That's very serious, actually. And so, uh, optometrist is not appropriate for that. I would just go to an ER immediately. She needs a CAT scan. It's called disconjugate gaze, and it's in the center of the brain where that sort of happens typically. It'd be a lot of different things causing it, but she needs to be seen. Yeah. Pronto. Yeah. So I thought it was first, the fact that what was happening, it's hard to tell these things when people are just spontaneously talking, but at first it looked like she had a lateral rectus palsy, like she couldn't pull her eye past midline, mm-hmm. but it's way worse than that, unfortunately. And lateral rectus palsy is in double vision. From that can be diabetes, very commonly. So, Oh, I never knew that. Wow. Good. good. It's, a, it's a neuropathy, quite literally. Okay, let me uh, pull out some emails and stuff here for you. We know we're getting into serious stuff here. Uh, here's, I'm 25. I'm into jujitsu. I lift weights. I went to a doctor to ask about a way to speed up recovery. I had an elbow issue that was hurting me. A suggestion was to stop doing training altogether. I, uh, he's 25. I asked about low dose testosterone to help with the injury. He seems to think that because I'm young, I shouldn't need those things. Dude, Nathan, he is absolutely correct. <laughs> do not take steroids. Do not take testosterone. You're 25, dude. Come on. You shouldn't even need supplements at that age. But uh, you might want to see a physical therapist if the elbow is the issue. And it's not about recovery from your training. It's not, you, it's all, it takes everybody a while to recover. It's about training properly, and it's about uh, getting that elbow taken care of, whatever is going on there, and a physical therapist would help you with that. This testosterone thing drives me a little bit nutty. Tell me about that. I've, I've, Be- yeah. Because I, I'm a fan of it for older men who have low testosterone. I mean, then, then fine. But people are taking testosterone because they're fatigued or they're not, you know, they want to get more out of their workouts. It, it's, just, it's like taking thyroid hormone or something. It, 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 you do it when there's a deficiency. And when there's a deficiency, there needs to be a diagnosis for why you're deficient. And that could be obesity. It could be opiate use. Or there are things that cause 
uh, low testosterone that are not illnesses per se, but you still need a, an explanation for low testosterone before you start throwing supplements at somebody. It's just ugh. And it seems like people more and more younger and younger ages. It's, it's are really not good. This, it is. Yeah. It is not good. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to get some stuff here. I took the. Uh, here's another one. With I took a testosterone booster. Uh, at what I, age? He doesn't say. Yeah. He's a young person. Uh, I noticed, oh, so I was getting more and harder erections. Now I'm getting less erections and my hair is falling out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I decided not to take the supplement anymore. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, what damage might have been done? Um, you need to see, we need to get a proper workup done on you to see what the, the supplements have done to you. There are supplements that will raise testosterone to levels that, oh my God, here's another one. Wow. And, and by the way, I am a fan of supplements done properly. It's just done willy-nilly it, it, it concerns me okay what are your thoughts on adrenal fatigue if you're a young person it does not exist uh let's see my cortisol was very high when it shouldn't be that wouldn't be adrenal fatigue that would be, be your adrenal glands are doing just fine i got on vitamin c pantothene dhea and ad adrenomend whatever that is. Mm. I lost 20 pounds and my anxiety has all gone. But, uh, but when I Google adrenal fatigue, most uh, websites say it's not a real thing. Most websites are right. But the fact that you were overweight and were able to lose 20 pounds, that probably reestablished your metabolism where it should be. Uh, I, you know, I'm guessing you were fatigued and that sort of thing, which is why you're talking about uh, fa adrenal fatigue. And uh, yeah, weight loss is it weight excess weight for some people is really not good. It uh, they begin to get insulin resistance, their fatigue, their sleep is messed up. When you had your, do you have sleep problems with the uh, pulmonary emboli? Well, oh, I did. I don't now, but yeah. oh yeah, I, I mean, I couldn't breathe. It was because I was already on blood thinners when I got the pulmonary embolisms. They're like, there's not much more we can do. You were already on Lovenox. And wait, hold on a second. They put you on Lovenox because you had a pulmonary embolism. No, I they put got, you on Lovenox? I got pulmonary embolisms while I was already taking Lovenox. But I'm a little confused. Why did they know to put you on Lovenox at all? Because they knew I had the clotting disorder. I had previously been diagnosed. Uh, did you have a leg clot or something? Yeah, yeah, I had a DVT, deep vein thrombosis oh, okay. in my second pregnancy. And they were like, do not under any circumstances have any more kids. I see. And yeah. then, so you had on Lovenox, did they... Did they there's a way to do it. You can give the heparin in a different way. You can they, adjust the heparin. It's called a dose, mini dose adjusted heparin. Do they do that? Well, they just doubled it. Is Double if it that's up. what that is. Yeah. Uh, or they just give you IV heparin too. Do they talk about that at well, all? Well, what's crazy is they did it during labor. The the L and D nurses. The IV I am I am still a legend in the labor and delivery board. They because they brought in a heparin stand, a bag, and, and the bag. labor and delivery yeah. nurses were like we've never seen one of these. <laughs> well, because you bleed. Yeah, and, right, right. And uh, that is, well, you can dial it in really exactly, though. If you start yeah. bleeding, you can always back off. And yeah. then the clot's going to happen. Did they talk about putting a something in your vena cava? Oh, and all stuff? we tried. We did the thing where they snake the thing, you know, through yes. your vein. They couldn't fully sedate me because I was pregnant. Oh they my get God. all the way in there, and they said it failed because my veins on the side were so expanded because of pregnancy the, the filter would not have worked. And so he was like, I'm not putting it in because it's, it's just a waste of time. So they were able to see all that when they yeah, went in. Yeah, yeah. Oh I've been through it God. physically. Oh, <laughs> what, what pregnancy number was that? This was uh, six. That was oh, that the was last when you one. Said, okay, yeah, good. yeah. The I was going to say, I would good. not suggest you have more pregnancies. No, uh, my OB, uh, when that baby was born, he, he he gave me this very weary eyed look and he said, let's not do this again. Yes. Usually they say, congratulations. No, not no. This it's time. like we made it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had, I had 20 blood draws in one arm repeatedly during the labor. I looked like a heroin addict. And were, and were you here in one Austin, of the yeah. university hospitals? Yeah, yeah, or something? Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so interesting. Well, I, I'm feeling a little less guilty about my uh, medical participation these days because I feel like I'm in a very complicated case here. <laughs> just with you. Right. So See, you're helping so, me. <laughs> so it's well, just being a part of a complicated case makes me feel worthwhile. So uh, all right. Uh, what do we got from Christina? We got some TikToks from her. So we can see what's in her head. Oh, here we go. She's talking to us here. Okay, look at this guy has sadly passed away. Bobby oh. became the viral sensation known as paint-eating grandpa, rose to fame after his granddaughter shared a picture of him mistakenly eating half a tub of paint. This led to him becoming a famous meme and an extremely popular Halloween costume. <laughs> He's a popular... Oh, here's another one. Well, we'll do that in a second one. 
Uh, but yeah, he drank paint evidently. What now? He he looked very cheerful and lovely, but I wonder if that was all dementia. We're making fun of a demented person, yeah. but then again, it's your mom's house. They do stuff like this here all the time. Uh, but he looked a little bit like something was up. Yeah, I, I kind of got that impression. Yeah, too, it's one from, thing to yeah. to put your lips to a pan, can of paint by accident, thinking it was yogurt, but to take a half a half a thing. And he had that look. And my mother in law had Alzheimer's, and there's a certain look that you kind of recognize. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. It could be minimal cognitive change after all. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, here are two Soxy Bears perfect match. Okay. okay. You know what's easy? Taking your socks off without turning them inside out. So why don't we do it? I don't fucking know. And I don't care. Very important <laughs> material. Thank you, Christina. <laughs> She's doing the Lord's work. So gra- graduated to wondering why we turn our socks inside out. All righty. Uh, <laughs> is there another voicemail for me? Yep, you got it. All right. Hey, Dr. Drew and Dr. Drew. It's Daniel from Central California. Daniel. Um, I had a question about vaginas. Okay. Um, so I was wondering, through the menstrual cycle, mm-hmm. does a vagina cleanse itself? Because as far as I know, it... It's the shedding of the u- utero lining, mm-hmm. right? Or mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. So, for example, this girl hooks up with a guy before her period and then hooks up with a guy after her period has started. Is that sloppy seconds? Keep them high and tight. I want to know. I need to understand the question. Uh, Shouts out to everybody doing their thing and <laughs> stuff like that. What does he mean sloppy seconds? I don't even well, know. Do you guys know what he means? It just he wanted you to use that word or ask the question or what? This is what men uh, think about all the time. Men, men, I didn't quite get no. It. They've got to use their d- brain for good all the time. Or it goes very sideways. Uh, <laughs> That's why you guys have to be workaholics. <laughs> yes. Uh, what is that, Chad? Oh, I didn't quite get it. We can play a different one. No, no. Let me do say one thing that we asked: Does it the, the vagina and the whole urogenital system is a perfect instrument? It's designed to do what it does, and it it doesn't. It takes care of itself. Now, women, you know, these days use tampons and things like that. But even if they didn't, the vagina would be just fine. It's designed. It's a perfect. Don't need to mess with it. It's it's designed perfectly. So, okay, give me another one. Drew and Booth Bros. This is Brian in Pennsylvania, and I've got a question about how diet can affect your sexual desire or Mm. sexual potency. Mm. So my girlfriend and I are going to be going on a vacation soon, and we haven't seen each other in a long time, and she just generally has a higher sexual drive than I do. Mm. So I was wondering if you have any tips or if it's even possible to increase your sexual desire or sexual potency by supplements or dietary changes or anything like that love the show keep it up you guys are doing god's work <laughs> piss on me beat me you bet i'm coming up in may it's, it's a greetings for this what happens when i do this <laughs> <laughs> oh i haven't heard from them in a long time they've been around the uh, gagging couple <laughs> i haven't seen much from them oh uh, you know i went i interviewed them on another show <laughs> did, I, did they bring them in here too I, I had the best time with them and uh anyway uh so um okay can, can his diet increase yes. so yeah. you you really I, i'm overwhelmed by this question because there's a bunch of we've just been talking about this you don't take things when yeah. you're a young person to uh enhance anything frankly you yeah. should just be balanced diet exercising but having said all that, if you are overweight, for sure losing weight will raise your testosterone level. If you are a male, resistance training will raise your testosterone level. So get into the gym, start working out a little bit. But beyond that, that's it. Now, for somebody older, if there's a re- if again men's testosterone levels drop, if they're really having functional problems, they don't have prostate cancer, or other uh, contraindications, then sometimes you'll add some testosterone in. You're saying knowingly, yes. Well, no, no, no. I the reason I was nodding is because I was also thinking that I, I swear sometimes that kind of thing can be psychological too. We think it's diet, and I was just sitting there thinking I I, I just wouldn't be surprised if 
I, this sounds so cheesy, but feeling yeah. better about himself. Right? Well, this is, back to like, this is such again. a mom. Yeah, you know, like, but, does he feel good about himself? I'm revealing my own issues here. It, so, well, no, it's, it's, it's a male female thing again. Because because men, even if they're in proper shape, they're, they don't care how they feel about themselves. Yeah. They're just moving on. They're moving on in. And But it, it is important, though, that the relationship be functioning. Because right, uh, right. And when guys have sexual dysfunction, it's actually more that they're anxious because they're so into it. Really? That's when they, that's when they okay. have trouble. They, they, when they're not into it, I mean, they, they, if they're not into it, they're not there. Yeah. You know, they, when, if they want to be there, if they really want to be there, then then that's where sexual dysfunction comes in sometimes. Kind that's of interesting, so interesting. Right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. I, yeah. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. I, I'm learning that I don't fully understand how men think. After being it, married it, 20 years, it's, I'm, it's, I am still learning. It's a different thing. And yeah. you see it more. You know, the, the odd thing to me is the, you know, the, in the prime reproductive years, you know, that's when God decided to make us the most different. Right. Because <laughs> it's those years when things are, because of the hormones and whatnot, it, things are a lot different. Well, listen, it's been a privilege to get to know you. Uh, it's been so fun. I hope you'll come back. And uh, where shall we find you? Where do you want people to go? So Instagram is great. I also have a podcast. My name is The Jenful Weiler Show. I, I love my podcast. It's on YouTube. You can look it up on YouTube. Your and, Patreon. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Patreon. Well, we, we can get to that later. But just look me up on YouTube. Um, I have like five viewers there. So maybe, you know, you guys can make it six and seven. Just look, just look up your name and that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Just that's Jenful great. Weiler. And then, of course, I'm very active on Instagram. Great. Uh, pleasure. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you all for sending us voice messages, emails, and for calling in, and we'll see you next time. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.